Hey, what's going on, everybody? Boylon here, back for another video on Marvel Strike Force. Now, are you interested in getting some more shards for North Star coming next week for his event? Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about exactly what you're going to need to do for next week's North Star event. It wasn't the data mines actually on Friday, but I just haven't had the right time to talk about it. So we're going to be doing that today. And we're going to be talking about why you might actually want to hoard ahead of his event next week, because there is, of course, going to be some stuff here where if you hoard, you might be able to get a little bit further ahead. We're also going to be talking about who might want to hoard. So are you the person that might benefit from the hoarding or maybe not? And so we're going to take a look at things like the strike pass and we're going to take a look at how many days can you actually miss of the strike pass if you don't do the daily objectives like the strike pass or the ISO, uh, sorry, the uh, campaign energy or the ISO 8 energy objective and how that actually makes a difference to the overall 14 days. So uh, I, I'll say right straight up front, I am going to be hoarding for North Stars event. We're going to talk about exactly what you need to do for that, though. Uh, and how you're going to be able to get some more shards for him because he is going to have his own orb in his character event next week. And so by hoarding, that's going to get me more shards for him, plus what's available in this free to play event, which I don't know yet. Uh, but all I do know is that by doing this, you'll get a little bit further than some people. So if you're ready to go, let's boil this down. Now, I know hoarding is contentious because some people do it, some people don't. And so we're going to start here in the data mines to talk about North Star's event. So coming soon, Guiding Lights, that's next week's event. So right now we have the uh, whatever it is, the Great White North, which is the Cabal, a Crucible event, things like that, and Isolate Energy Spending. But there's no there's no leaderboard attached to that, so it's not really a big deal, whereas this one does. So not only does it have a leaderboard attached to it, but it is a character release event as well. So we need to talk about this. So unlock North Star and earn Crimson Gear in this exciting event. Guiding Light Milestone, earn progress in this seven-day event by earning Radiant Flight Orb Fragments from Campaign Nodes. Battling in War, Battling in Blitz with Alpha Flight Carriers. <laughs> That's funny, right? Because it's just like Battling in Blitz. Uh, why do, it's probably bonus points, right? It's going to be that thing where if you have like five yellow and some of the newer characters, you, you might get some bonus points. Maybe they might be generous and just give it to you for that flat character. Uh, we'll have to see uh, on Friday when they release the blog post for this. Uh, completing the Wayfinder web milestone and from daily free claims. Earn celestial rewards, including North Star shards, dark diamond credits, crimson mutant gear. You'll also earn points towards you know, the month long, blah, 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 blah. Collect the, you know, the item, the empty root beer. There's going to be a guiding lights leaderboard. Compete on the leaderboard for crimson gear and North Star diamond promotions. Now, it doesn't say what, well, it actually says up here. It does say crimson mutant gear. So I'm going to go out on a limb. Normally, each of the leaderboards have to do with that character. So we had a Dokken and a Panda Pool uh, leaderboard, and both of those contained Mutant. Actually, the Sins of the Father, which I believe is just paying out now or should be paying out soon, uh, is Mutant. Uh, Panda Pool was Mutant. And we've had actually a lot of leaderboards that are... Mm, the first one was Mystic for Cosmic Ghost Rider. There was one related to him. And then there was a bunch of tech. There was maybe two tech payouts. And then like three... I want to say three. This is the third. Mutant, actually, the, the, this North Star one might be the fourth. So a lot of Mutant G19 mini gears uh, chucking out your way. And, you know, I will take more. Of course, why not, right? Uh, but I, I don't understand why they were not kind of like making... There's none for bio. There hasn't been any for skill, which I really want for my spider society. And so I have not been able to get those. But nonetheless, what can you do to kind of guarantee that 1% to 3% a little bit easier? But the hoarding is not specifically for the leaderboard. It's actually because this is a character release event that involves farming orb fragments from the campaign nodes. And I think that's one of the bigger reasons why I'm kind of opting to hoard this time around rather than, you know, spending 400 to 600 cores daily, which, you know, you typically would guarantee you 1% to 3% without hoarding. But this allows you to kind of, uh, get a little bit further ahead so you don't have to do those 100 core refreshes because once you hit 200 cores, you know, you have to go uh, 100 core refreshes. That's what it goes all the way up to 600. And it's just it's a lot of power cores. So if you were to hoard in advance like six or seven days and you do the 50 core refreshes over the if, over the course of all of that, you'll actually end up spending less cores. If that makes sense, you'll also get more ahead in terms of the shards because it's going to be an orb which is going to have an estimated value of about three to five shards per orb. Typically, that's what it is. Uh, the web milestone for this also is Alliance credits. Honestly, should be really, really easy as well. So that's not really the big problem here. You can see the points. So earn one Radiant uh, Orb Fragment from campaigns and the free claim. War battles, 
uh, earning Guiding Light milestone points from the web milestone. And then you can actually see it here. So Battle and Blitz with North Star. And so you do get just flat points for North Star, Guardian, and Sasquatch, and then bonus points for them at five. Now, I'm obviously not going to have any of them at five. I doubt it, you know, unless I happen to get a North Star or five star by the end of this event. A Guardian, I'll have the bear unlock. And I guess this means that Sasquatch's offer is going to be sometime within this week of this event because he's on the points. So that's interesting. So his uh, offer is going to be pretty close behind Guardians then in that case because Guardians is on Friday. So I guess they're only leaving like one week maybe in between these characters. So that's interesting. Now, uh, what I want to do cover though in this is basically what happens if you hoard. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the strike pack pass because some people have been asking me this. And so I have the math. I broke down the math in terms of like what happens if you were to hoard uh, and not complete the daily objective. Let's say the campaign energy objective or the ISO 8 energy. And so this is the points the broken down. Basically, I'm going to zoom in here. RTA, isotope, all, all, the, all the different objectives here. Uh, this is stuff that you would get on a regular basis. And then this is where the raids, the two raids, eight raids, donate, spend 600 energy and 400 ISO energy. Now you'll see that the ISO energy daily objective is actually worth a lot more than the 600 energy per day. One level is 75, as you know. So just to go back to uh, my strike pass down here in the corner. Uh, so when you click on the strike pass, you'll see that every level is about 75 points. What that means is, well, in the grand scheme of things, it takes, takes like three days, two and a half days of the energy one to, to equate to one level. Or if you do everything every single day, uh, you're getting 310 strike pass uh, experience point or points or whatever. So that, that, that's basically like four levels towards your strike pass. And so really at the end of the day, like one full day of objectives is worth about 10 days of the energy milestone uh, of yeah, the energy objective and about six days of the ISO objective. So what's really important is understanding basically how many days it takes to complete a strike pass. Then you can know how much of this you can skip. So at the regular rate at 310 points per day, it takes 12.8 uh, days to complete the strike pass normally. Now, this is with the 155 points that you get that they send out for free at the beginning of each strike pass. And it's just basically all the levels that's required. So what this means is you have like a day and a bit of wiggle room. So that's only if you do it as per normal. Now, if you hoarded it before it goes live, because, you know, everyone says save your daily objectives before it goes live on Monday. And then you can claim it towards the pass that actually shaves off an into. Well, I mean, as you would assume, you know, it, it shaves off an entire day's worth the strike pass so instead of 12.8 it's 11.8 which actually makes a pretty big difference when it comes to hoarding and skipping out on some of these objectives namely the energy ones because if you do everything else you can in fact skip the campaign energy one for sure for at least a week you can actually do it for like two weeks so i actually mathed it out here so 14 days campaign energy hoarding basically you're not completing this objective and if you didn't do it at all and you hoarded if you did this thing here. So hoarding before it went live, then you could still complete it with one day to spare. Now, typically, I would not recommend you to hoard for 14 days. I probably wouldn't do it much more than six or seven days, to be honest, because there is other stuff that you're missing, right? You're going to be missing gold. You're going to be missing gold or fragments, you know, training or fragments, whatever it is that you're farming with your campaign energy. So it's not something I ne necessarily recommend doing for that long. But you could hypothetically, you could continue to farm uh, hoard uh, your campaign energy in perpetuity. Uh, for as long as you want, and it won't impact your strike pass as long as you hoarded your daily objectives before it went live on the Monday. Now, if you were to hoard ISO 8 energy and do 14 days of that, not quite. Like you're, you're basically you're going to have to buy a few levels with your power cores if you are doing this for the ISO 8 energy. Now, if you're hoarding both of them, if you're basically if you're not clearing both the energy objectives, then it's going to take you 16 days, which means it's too short and that's not good. A two days short and and yeah that's not good and so you would have to core how many times i don't know i think it's about 1200 to 1400 cores i have it listed over here uh and hoarded you, you this is including that you hoarded before the pass went live so it's not very good i don't i do not recommend hoarding both your energies i only recommend hoarding one at a time and in this case for the north star event i'm going to be hoarding my campaign energy it's just too much missed if you do both of them um and i would say by and large it's easier to hoard the ISO 8 energy because you're not missing as much. When you're hoarding campaign energy, you're missing, you know, the stuff that you get out of the campaigns, right? You're the, the, the gold orb fragments, the training orb fragments, whatever it is that you're farming shards, I guess, if there's character shards that you still need from some of the nodes. And so you're losing out more on a daily basis by hoarding that than you are ISO 8 energy. And so why am I recommending this is because I feel like the shards for North Star, 
longer term, I think is more worth it than a temporary, you know, and we'll talk about, I'm going to talk about it right now, actually, in terms of the campaign energy and what you're going to get. So this is typically your daily energy without coring. Uh, so 288 time-based energy, 240 from the free refreshes, 100 from the web milestone. It gives you about 628 campaign energy. So assuming that you're not coring at all, maybe just your day-to-day and you're just spending as is, you know, your 600 a campaign energy. Let's say you farm gold over fragments, you know, like I, that's what I do. I don't know about you all. Like for my alt account, I actually do the training orb node. Uh, but nonetheless, for my main account, I do farm gold. And so I'm essentially getting one gold orb per day with the 600 energy and about 285,000 gold on the node. So it's roughly around half a million gold daily that if I were not farming basically because of hoarding or whatever, you know, that I'm not getting. And so over seven days, that's 3.5 million gold. Or over 14 days, which again, I don't really recommend that, but that's about 7 million gold, you know, times it by two. So that's basically what you would be missing out on if you decided to hoard, which is why I'm only doing it for seven days. I do believe that the getting ahead in the leaderboard for this time around and also the extra shards out of the orb for uh, North Star will be worth missing out on three and a half million gold in my opinion, because I think those shards, I value those shards a little bit more than three and a half million gold. We're going to make that up in the war season right now. Where we're seeing like a 60% increase in the gold. So anything like temporary, you know, you're going to get it back anyway. So it's not really that big of a deal. Let's talk about ISO 8 energy though. So if you decided to hoard ISO 8 energy for a future event, you know, what's going to happen there? Well, 770 is kind of your daily without coring, that kind of thing. You get a free ISO pack every day. So 770 ISO 8 energy, if you converted that into gold, it's not a lot. It's like 62,000 gold daily times seven days. It's, it's really like minuscule. So you can afford to miss and skip out on ISO 8 energy. And it's not going to really make that big of a deal unless you're super crushed on crystals, ISO crystals. You really need to do that. But in terms of the difference between like, you know, uh, 440K over seven days versus uh, 3.5 million gold over seven days, you can see that ISO 8 energy is better to hoard. However, because of the uh, strike pass points, you know, it, it will be a bit tighter. And if you didn't actually hoard before it went live, then it is pretty tight. And so you probably would only be able to hoard about six or seven days of ISO 8 energy before it started impacting uh, your, I would see, because because this is 12.8 days. So basically you could hoard one day's worth of this. So 310 points or like six days of the ISO 8 energy before it starts impacting potentially your strike pass. So do keep that in mind. Uh, whereas the 30 points from the energy spending one is a lot easier to hoard in perpetuity. So who am I recommending this to exactly? Probably people who are already level 100. You know, I, I, I don't think that I would really recommend you hoarding because you're going to be losing out on XP as well. So it's not just the, the gold and stuff that I was talking about. It's also the XP towards level 100. So if you're not 100 yet, it's probably not something for you. And you might want to just consider doing the, you know, 400 cores daily to get that one to three percent. Anyways, you know, after the event goes live, this is kind of aimed at basically people who are kind of playing at the top, I suppose, who like it's not really a big deal if you miss out on three million gold, you know, because I think that getting those extra shards, especially from a free to play manner, I think is going to be much more important. And I do have to real really reiterate, like how important these uh, these leaderboard events really are. Can you get one to three percent, you know, without hoarding? Y you can. I just think that longer term and especially because of this upcoming event with North Star is going to reward you for spending campaign energy by giving you orb fragments. I think that's better value as well to hoard that you're going to I'm going to come away with more uh, North Star shards, you know, by hoarding because I'm going to get more orbs than someone who didn't. And so that's the only reason why I'm deciding it to do for this one. And I think it's kind of like on a week by week basis or maybe every two weeks. I would mainly only hoard for leaderboard events in general. And so I wouldn't do it for something like right now, which is the Great White North, which is a really crappy event in terms of the reward structure and, and what you're getting out of it. So I wouldn't have done it for that. But for leaderboard events, for sure. And if they happen to reward orbs for spending energy, probably even more so there, because sometimes they're actually pretty decent, even if it's not a character unlock. But specifically for this one, I think there's going to be some good value. So uh, I'm going to get one to three percent for the next event. Actually, I'm almost certain I got it for this one, too. Just double checking. Thirty three seventy five. It's very hard to break into the top one thousand, even with the kind of hoarding that I'm talking about. That's most likely it's, it's typically spender territory because you need to get the bonus points, which are usually those five, five plus yellow and honestly, the six plus yellow star bonus points that you get from these events. Uh, but it still can help some people get further ahead, making sure that you're landing in that one to three percent of that leaderboard for sure. And you're actually going to spend less cores, believe it or not, if you're just doing 200 cores and then hoarding that. So I'm recording this at like one in the morning. 
So as soon as this hits the cap, I'm because I, I, I did my daily objectives. Okay, actually, I didn't do it for the day. I, but I'm going to start skipping it anyway, so it doesn't really... This part doesn't make a big deal, like, because of the math that I told you. And I'm going to start hoarding this. So once I hit 150 in the morning, I'm going to start coring up and then uh, stacking this for the next six days. That way that when the event goes live, I'm going to have a crap ton of energy to uh, convert into or fragments when the North Star event starts. So that's just some suggestions and some tips. But, you know, make sure that you're keeping on on top of this channel here because we'll be talking about events and stuff on a weekly basis, events that you can kind of, you know, plan ahead for that you can kind of prep early for. That's kind of like the main basis of this event here. I also wanted to go over the strike pass math just so people were sure about like how many days can you miss hypothetically you know, by not doing those objectives, because I've been asked that question before. And hopefully I can clear some of that all up for you all. Anyways, let me know what your plans are in the comments down below. Are you going to hoard for North Star here uh, for Alpha Flight? He's going to be a very important member of the team. And honestly, as far as like the damage goes, I think he's going to be pretty good. Uh, so I can't wait for that event next week, but we'll see on Friday in terms of the point structure and all that and more. So that's the end of this video, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. And until next time, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you all later. Boylan signing out.